evolutionists believe that humans evolved from apes. They think that the fossil record shows the slow and gradual evolution of humans over millions of years, and one of their favorite ape men is Lucy. They think that Lucy could stand upright and walk on her hind legs just like we do. But when they first found her pelvis, it looked kind of ape-like. Did evolutionists fraudulently modify her hip bones to make them seem more human-like than they really were? Well, today, we're gonna reconstruct Lucy's pelvis for ourselves to find out what it was really like. So let's first begin by looking at our own pelvis. This is the pelvis of a modern human. And what you can see is that there are three main bones to it. Let's go have a quick anatomy lesson here. This middle kind of triangular one is called the sacrum. And then on either side, you've got an os coxae. And you can see that these are what you're actually hitting when you feel your hips, right? So if you go right here, you're feeling your hip. This is actually the surface of the os, os coxae. And this upper part of this bone is called the ilium. Now, when we look at Lucy's pelvis, we can see we only have two pieces left. We've got that middle sacrum, and then we've also got the left os coxae. But we don't have Lucy's right os coxae, unfortunately. It was just missing when scientists found her skeleton. Years after Lucy was found, Nova released a documentary detailing the story of her discovery. I'm about to show you a clip from this documentary that garnered a lot of outrage from creationists. When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossilization. The perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bone seem to flare out like a chimp's. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. It was a tricky job, but after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Here is what creationists had to say about the clip. But after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Look how perfect! You can read a newspaper through the hole. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, this is what we call science. Wow. You notice what he said? It was a tricky job. Tricking. This is a PBS special. Meant to show the children. Oh, the scientist knew what Lucy's hip bone looked like before he got stepped on. And he could fix it. No problem. And that's Dr. Owen Lovejoy. And he thinks he's doing good science. What would you call that? Yeah, most of us would call it fraud. You're playing with the evidence to make it do what you want it to do. You submit that in a courtroom, you would be the one in trouble. However, they also decided that the hip was damaged and that it needed to be repaired. So they took a saw and reshaped it and made it look more like a human pelvis, allowing her to walk upright. But Professor Lovejoy, who actually worked on this, there is video evidence of him using a Dremel to drill it, to correct it, in order to put it into a pelvis shape that looks like it walks upright. So who's right? Was Lucy's pelvis actually damaged as the evolutionists claim? And if so, did it need to be reconstructed? And did the evolutionists do the reconstruction properly? Well, it turns out that Lucy's pelvis was damaged prior to fossilization. This is most evident from the big hole in the ilium and the many cracks on the front and back of the fossil. When we compare Lucy's pelvis to the pelvic bones of other Australopithecines, we find an interesting difference. When we look at their hip bones from the top, what we see is a nice kind of S-shaped or sigmoidal curve. But Lucy's pelvis doesn't follow that pattern. Instead, a big blob of bone just sticks up straight at a right angle to the rest of the iliac blade. That is unnatural. Now when we take Lucy's sacrum and we fit it together into that kind of broken and distorted joint surface, what we end up with is a kind of weird anatomical position. 
What you can see then is that these bones of the lower pelvis here kind of stick and just jut straight forward. And we know that's anatomically impossible. Why? Well, when we look at a modern human pelvis, we have these two bones in the front called the pubic bones, and they nearly touch just, just about like that. There's a little thin piece of cartilage right in between them and your pelvis needs to come around and connect in the front. Otherwise, you couldn't bear weight on your pelvis. But because Lucy's pelvis is broken and distorted, if it were in this anatomical position, we didn't try to reconstruct it, both of her pubic bones would just stick straight forward and they wouldn't connect. It would be like if you took your pelvis bones and just went like that. <laughs> It's impossible, and no creature has a pelvis shape like that. Except for whales and snakes, whose tiny little pelvic bones aren't used for weight bearing anyway, and thus are completely irrelevant. So we know Lucy's pelvis is broken. The question is how to fix it. So here's our plan of action. This is the 3D print of Lucy's pelvis. And as you can see, I've marked the cracks running through it in black to kind of help us see what we're doing. Now, I'm going to cut along these cracks and try to replicate what Dr. Owen Lovejoy did when he was cutting apart Lucy's pelvis, and then we're going to get these separate pieces and assemble them back together into the anatomically correct original position. So this is going to be a little bit different from what Dr. Owen Lovejoy did in that rather than using a Dremel, we're going to be using saws and other stuff to try to cut this apart. He was working with a plaster cast, and basically, as you might have noticed when I showed you that clip earlier, is that he ground down. So he was basically grinding through the plaster down to get the original pieces of each of the individual fragments. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut the pieces apart. So it's a little bit of a different technique, but we should get pretty similar results. So let's do it. I'm going to cut Lucy's pelvis to pieces. <laughs> Maybe this will work better. I just finished hot gluing all of the pieces back together, and here we have the completely reconstructed ilium. Now, it was, I will admit, somewhat difficult, especially with, you know, the level of quality of a 3D print, which is different than you would do if you were reconstructing the original or even uh, actual plaster cast off the original, so that made it a little difficult at times to know exactly where to cut, and, you know, Cutting with the power tool that I was using removed some of the material, unlike what Owen Lovejoy used in his reconstruction, where he was cutting down to the actual fragments to make sure that he wasn't removing their edges. So that kind of introduced a little bit of distortion as well. But I think what I've ended up here is a decently accurate idea of what Lucy's pelvic blade would have looked like. And when I turn it like this, say you're looking down at the top, you can see now that it looks more kind of like a sigmoidal curve. And that part at the end here with the sacroiliac joint isn't just sticking up at a random angle. So now I'm gonna connect this to this pelvis here and kind of compare it with the other side. So on the tan side, of course, is the cast, and this is still distorted. Now, when I turn it like this, what you can see is that it very much kind of just sticks out to the side, whereas the gray reconstructed side curves around towards the front a little bit more, which is likely more accurate and is a more human-like uh, morphology, which is related to being able to you know, lift your leg to the side. So overall, I think this is actually a pretty good uh, example of how Lovejoy you know, reconstructed the pelvis. And I think this is uh, pretty well demonstrates that when you take these bones and then rearrange them to a more anatomically accurate position, 
you actually get a position which looks more human-like. So, this all proves that Lucy's an ape man then, right? Well, I don't think so. I'm a creationist, and I don't think that Lucy evolved into humans, but I think the evidence clearly shows that she did walk upright on her hind legs. So to me, this is just another amazing example of the diversity of God's design. Hi there, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe so that YouTube recommends to your upcoming content. Also, make sure to share this video with your friends who might be interested. We all have friends who are big paleoanthropology nerds, right? They actually believe that she walked him right because of her pelvis, but when they found it, it was crushed. So what they did is they reassembled it using a power saw to make it look like she walked upright. It seems like your best evidence for evolution is missing a few pieces.